Jay-Z Clark's in the studio. Billy Brownless thinks he's a newsbreaker. <laughs> but let's introduce him to a real one. <laughs> on Triple M's Rush Hour, it's Jay-Z Clark. And good to have him in too. Welcome to you, uh, mate. Hello, Jay. But you got to stop with the funny noises. Just just talk normally. Just be normal on the radio. Just speak plainly. No, we love it. It gives us something. We you love it. You think so? Yeah. Okay. All right, Bill. Adds a bit to your personality. Hey, uh, great to be here, um, <laughs> uh, Bill. And JB, because Jeepers, have the headlines been coming thick and fast about your former club, yeah. JB? And we say we said this at the time when you left, it left them vulnerable and yes. exposed, and the club's just fallen um, in a heap. But it was a genuine shock yesterday when we find out on the eve of the mid season rookie draft, uh, Bill, that three of their recruiters, uh, including their former list boss in Glen Luff, yep. their national recruiting manager, have walked out on the footy club. Now, why have they? Well, Mark Finnegan was poached by Hawthorne. Yes. He's close with Mark McKenzie. It was a three-year deal and North didn't match it, so off he goes. Righto. The recruiting officer wanted to get out of the industry and do something else, so that's... Hadn't he been there 17 years? That's fine. No, that was Finnegan. Finnegan, Finnegan that was the was, first one. Right, yep. But Luff was the one who come from the blue. He has the champion data uh, background, and we can tell you, um, Jim and Bill, that he was not shunted. I won't, say, won't use the word shunted, but he was moved aside last November from the official list manager position to a probably lesser role in pro scouting. So he was focusing more on the state leagues uh, rather than doing uh, a heap of the contracting uh, bills. So that's quite right. a senior position, yes. but it's a little sideways uh, shuffle. That happened in uh, November. And as we've been criticising some of the club's list calls over the past few years, Luke Davies, Uniaki over Chera, Will Phillips over Logan McDonald, they handed Melbourne the Kasai picket trade. Um, it's fair to say that the recruiters didn't feel the support and the love and the all in unity, mm. um, that the club had previously preached. So they, the recruiting department felt like they were being hang out to dry. There wasn't the connection and the love and, um, all the finger pointing starts, right? And you know, Jim, when it starts to splinter and fracture, then that is when serious gaps, uh, open up because for them to be as young as they are all rowing the boat, performing on the same field. They need people in the off-field positions, all going swimmingly and being united as well. Now, it is clear, as as uh, North Melbourne legend Wayne Carey said today, Rabsy, on your magnificent podcast, that this is a broken football club which needed to confront the problems. He's saying they're being delusional. They're broken off the field and on the field. Mm. Well, Is I, that too strong? Yeah, I think it is. I, I think the... The, the the business of the business is actually in really good shape, but the what's that? Court, the on-field, in, no, no, oh, the, the finances, the, the, yeah, so the yeah. debt free, if you like, the business part. Yep. But the core business, which is footy, is in all sorts. Yeah. And, and there's no other way to, to. I mean, you've got 2020. I'm just trying to think and remember remember my years. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2020 was the worst season in the club's history since 1972 or something like that. So yep. 50 plus years. Mm. Uh, and then they go the next year with a season worse than that yep. or wins. and they're on track for having another one. Yep. So you, you can't do anything but say that the core business of the club yep. is in, you know, a, a pretty parlous state. So I'm with you. I think yep. if you're going to have these periods, go to the draft, bottom out, you know, empty your list out. You must have high quality football people yep. to run that rebuild through. And so maybe Nate, they need some more of that uh, acumen. And everyone says that Brady Rawlings uh, does a very good job. Maybe he needs more support. There are two real key worries, and that is re- they're really coming to focus over the last couple of weeks. The coach, David Noble, and his relationships, the potential, and, um, you know, with Alistair Clarkson and Adam Simpson sitting there in the wings, you wonder what negotiations are happening in the background mm-hmm. at the moment because Alistair Clarkson being the greatest coach of the modern era, Bill. Former player. Former North Melbourne player. If they're not throwing the kitchen sink at him in the background right now as he's up for grabs. But I hear Jackie Zebel saying, we love the coach. He has to say that. But it, it, he's said it two or three times. The coach is apologising for being too harsh and our young players are putting their contracts on hold. That's all the evidence you need, Bill. As Jim says, the core business is going backwards yeah. and he was brought in as this overseer. There are, question, there are definite question marks there. And now Jason Horn Francis, JB. Yeah, so he's, he's probably the most important um, entity at this football club anyway. He's going home to see his family on Mother's Day and not telling the football club. Now, what are the 800 players in the AFL? Every single one of them is clear. If you are going on interstate, if you are getting on any sort of plane, if you were going anywhere, you know, at a distance, 
then you tell the football club. You have to tell the football club mm. everything. Yes, yeah. you do. Now, why? How does he not he just have wanted the, to get home? He, but you've got to have the clarity. Like he knows that bill. He's chosen not to tell them. Mm. Oh, and that to me right. speaks of a lack of clarity, lack of something. Lack of information yeah. that I must admit, uh, Jay Z, and I don't know anything, I, and I'm putting my hand on my heart. Mm. I haven't spoken to anyone at the club. Well, you've done enough, but I, <laughs> I, I worry about what's going on in the last 48 hours. Yeah, none of that, none of that looks good. Yeah, and when you were there and you're running a football club, how important is it to have everyone on the same page, oh, everyone united? It, it, it alignment. Yep. Firstly, you've got to get the right people through the door and yep. working for you. And secondly, they must be aligned. From chairman to the boot yes. starter, everyone yep. has got to be on the same page and yep. trying to achieve the same thing. Hold on. Now, they have a lot of young kids who they're trying to recontract. All the player managers are saying, we're going to hold. We're going to see what's happening with North Melbourne. Let's see how this water flows under the bridge. Tristan Cherry's out of contract. You think he'd be looking at a, a bumper uh, 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 pay boost. And then you also look at this football club trying to... Um, Bring in, what are you laughing at, Rabsy? No, he's, <laughs> no. He's and they're also trying to target mature age talent, right? And be an attractive football club. How do you do that mm. when you're on the Doesn't balls of your backside? Who would you rather coach? Here's one. West Coast or North? Oh, I think West Coast track record, resources, at financial the stability. The really? bit of work, no, a lot of work there. Coast. They're both going. Yeah, they're ordinary. both going. Both going. I did like to, to, to throw something positive into the North discussion, mm-hmm. uh, Jay-Z. I did like Saturday afternoon a lot more. Yep. There was effort. Spirit. Yeah. That has got to be the baseline. Yep. Every time, you're not expecting them to win too many games. They're not in that phase of this redevelopment, but you do yep. expect to see effort. And, yep. and there was effort. They delivered so that. I, I, I did like what I saw, even though... They still got beaten by 10 goals. They're playing against the best team in the comp. That was much better. I did. I have seen some players run around, the former North Melbourne players though, Jim. And North Melbourne players would be a bit concerned about this. Trent DeMont, Robbie Tarrant, Mason Wood, Matt Jack Daw, Ben Brown, Sean Higgins, all in different colours. How many of them wouldn't be getting a game for North Melbourne at the moment? And I know they're in a list build and they're Jay-Z. trying to go to the future. Jay-Z, we're mates. <laughs> you, you keep going much longer with this. How many, Jim? And you'll be down to one segment. You're going to have to go back. You and then get you, back in you, there. I'm going to have to get you back out there. Yeah, back out there. <laughs> Otherwise, now go to, you fought so hard to keep the club in Melbourne, right? Yes. The AFL wants a club in Tasmania. No, it won't be going to Tasmania. Well, it's the elephant in the room, Bill. Who is it? They'll have a, start, they'll have a standalone team in, in Tassie. Will they? Yeah. 2028. 20, okay. Don't give me the <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Jay-Z. Cold oh, frost don't... moved in between you and I. <laughs> I don't want all your hard work to go no. Got to try and get back out there. <laughs> <laughs> More Jay-Z Clark next on the Rush Hour. Triple M. This is Triple M's Rush Hour. Melbourne Storm coach Craig Bellamy after five. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for that. Super now, coach. a mid-season rookie draft coming yes. up. Yes, and I tell you what, um, there are some nice talents out there, JB. Don't talk these players down. I mean, sometimes yep. the clubs say, oh, there's not much there, and we don't know what we can get, etc. How many picks will there be uh, next Wednesday? It fif- is, by the way. 15-ish. 15, So right. this is where Jai Newcomb became yes. Yes. a very, very good orc. And there's another Jai on the radar. Jai Kelly. Jai Newcomb, it is not... It, he could win their best and fairest, yeah. Hawthorne, yep. this year. He had a contract at the end of the next year. Could, could win the rising star. Favorite, $2.50 favourite for the uh, rising. He's hard. Yeah. Uh, killed the Cats. So Jai Cully. So he, so West Coast to North Melbourne, it could be either or for the first pick still. So you look at the bottom of the ladder, or 2% separates North Melbourne and West Coast. So it's currently the Eagles with the first pick. And there's a couple of really strong-bodied midfielders uh, who stand out. So Jai Cully's 192-centimetre goal kicker. Where's Dan he Nanong, Dan Nanong Stingrays. Stingrays. Yep. So he's, he's sort of talked about as the leading overage 19-year-old uh, talent in the uh, NAB League. So he's one. He kicks goals, Jim. He played in the, yeah, the rep game. Yes. Young Guns game. Four goals, 22 two. positions. Yeah, yeah. Four yes. goals, two and 22 touches. So he hits, he hits the scoreboard. And he, and he has the body, like New Newcomb, yeah. ready to compete straight away. The other one is Josh Carmichael. So he's 189 centimetres. He's a um, West Adelaide boy. So this is Sandful. Very similar. Being playing high-level football, big numbers, kicks goals. Um, I'd be surprised if he slips through past the Crows. Um, but um, that could that, 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 that would really surprise me. The other one is Massimo D'Ambrosio. So he Massimo. Is a, yeah, so he is uh, shorter. He's got a look in, in the Richmond uh, VFL. Think Caleb Daniel, Jim. Mm. Um, so he's a, a really good ball user. So you look at your former club, and I don't want to dig a, dig a, dig a hole, but could they turn it up? Could North Melbourne turn the footy over anymore? No. 
They couldn't hand it to the opposition. Sometimes it's not even miss kicks. It looks like they're genuinely picking out Jake Lever. Anyway, so Massimo D'Ambrosio, who can use the ball really well. He's another one um, who's going to appeal. There's some uh, bigger guys. Yep. Of course, the um, a, one Ruckman who's sort of a bit of a standout, a Ramsden, of course. So there's a good sprinkling of talent there, Bill. Mm-hmm. And th- don't believe the club sometimes when they say, oh, we don't have high expectations. There might not be a lot there because we've seen with Marlon Pickett. We've seen with John Newcomb. Seen with Tyson Stengel who kicked another three at the uh, weekend. He's very good. Casey Boss, exist. will we hear his name? He is polarized. Son of? The great Michael. Mm. Michael. So the thing is with Casey Voss, so he's a halfbacker. He he rack, racks up a lot of possessions. He's a very smart player. He sees the game. His coaches love the way he picks out great targets. The question is, you know, the upside and can he compete with the speed of the game? Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, talking to some recruits today, they think he's probably a very good state league player. I'd love to see him uh, get a crack. And his, his greatest attribute is how he can, uh, is, his, is his footy smarts, Jim. Danger field. Jeez, there's been some focus on him. Well, is he? I'll ask you, Jim, since uh, Bill, since you're the I'm what, Bill, you, you're the you're the weight <laughs> expert here. Yeah, it's been put that he might be needing to just slim down a bit. Ooh. Do you think he's is he carrying? Well, he too gets much. caught a bit nowadays. Remember, yep. he used to ping off, get the ball and ping, yep. and he'd run run away from players. He hasn't been Break doing away. that, but he's had some injuries, by the way. Yeah. Ankles and everything. And, uh, he's had a lot in calf, exactly. Yeah. So what the Cats are going to do is give him the next two weeks off. Yeah. Then they've got the bye, so it's a three-week break. Yep. And he's going to do a little mini preseason. I've heard the mini preseason. He was a bit flat on the weekend. He was unwell. Yeah, um, he's crook. He's, he's got nearly his every disease you can have. So he needs to build up that calf strength. But yeah, but we saw last year. This, yes. th- this does happen in footy, Jay-Z. Patrick Cripps wasn't right last year. We all yeah. knew it. Mm-hmm. And he, he wasn't able to cover the ground, and he didn't have the impact. Now he's got himself right in the off-season, and he's flying. Yep. He's a different footballer. Yeah. He's so just, if you get your body right, it's right. got to make playing the game easier. And he's sure. still their trump card, but has he got to a point in his career where he's better suited forward, Jim? Danger. Yes. No, you've still got to throw him in the middle. But isn't he, isn't he forward with stints in the middle? Because when he's a full-time midfielder, yeah. these are the issues that are being exposed. But because he's still their trump card, he's got that breakaway pace, mm. he's still the X factor that's required to carry a big that's load right. in there. I think ideally he'd play more forward yeah. with and stints he in. He did turn it on, though, for 10 minutes on yes. the weekend. Yes. So he's still got yes. the magnificence in him. Yes. But he's not 100%. No. And he hasn't been no, all year. Right. And I'm loath to... Um, bring this man up, Bill. Boo. But we did see the Collingwood captain, Scott Penderbury, oh, no. lose weight. Oh, no. And he is playing out. <laughs> Still all Australian, is he? On the, on the halfback flank. Well, uh, he's, it's, a, it's a tough crowd back there in the halfback flank, is, uh, Bill. What, so Where else are we going? Uh, Cyril. Uh, what about Cyril? <laughs> yes. What am I hearing well, there? Yeah, the Olive Branch has been, uh, has been put forward by Hawthorne. Sam Mitchell said he would love to reconnect with Sam Mitchell, who has been open about. Um, Cyril Rioli. Cyril Rioli. Yep. Open about. Um, the disappointment um, he felt in his departure from Hawthorne. Some comments from Jeff Kennett. Yes. They are trying on a daily basis, the Hawks, to reconnect with Cyril Rioli. They're going up to the NT, of course, where he is. And hopefully, um, for everyone, if he feels comfortable, Cyril, he will accept Hawthorne's invite and they can work on bridging that relationship right. because he is a, a legend of the game. And um, I think they need to sit down and have some more conversations and Talk about some things that will make everybody feel better about the way that was all left. Did I hear Stewie Jew might uh, be in the re-signing window? Is this true? The talk at Gold Coast is that um, they are happy with him, that their past month has been, um, you know, a a forward step, that Lacocious is not far away from being re-signed, which is a big tick for that football club, and that Stuart Jew will recommit maybe only for two to three more years. won't be a long-term extension, but certainly they are very pleased with him. So that is big in the Alistair Clarkson conversation. Can potentially put a line through them. Brett Ratton, too. At the Saints. And that's he deserves a yeah. tick for... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beauty, Brett Ratton. Yeah. So Stewie, by But the way. every time a coach is coming out of yeah. contract, it's all else to Clarkson, isn't so it? So where does Clarko land? He says he wants to go to a, a, a team that Giants. can win a premiership. GWS, they've elevated James Hurd into an assistant coaching role. They've got Dean Solomon there. They're very happy with Mark McVeigh. Gut feel is they would prefer someone with some presence, some profile, mm. because they've also got to sell the game up there. So Nathan Buckley's out. Let's see what Ken Hinckley, what unfolds there at Port Adelaide. Mm. Clarkson's uh, number one. 
I just think North Melbourne in the background wouldn't shock me if there'd uh, be a whole heap of communication going on in the background. He's good at, it. He's good at this, Joe. I didn't like your first segment. No, was, <laughs> but it was <laughs> fair. What he said was fair. Was well, you brought him up, and then they're falling down, oh, Jim. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, the second segment was better. Oh, <laughs> good, good to see you, Jay-Z. Get it back out there. <laughs> it's a rush hour. Triple M.